All right, hello YouTube. Got Jake and Fosa here again for another how-to. Uh, this time we're going to be showing you how to properly rescreen a window. We got this out of one of the residence units. Pretty tore up. It's got some cuts in it. Uh, one of the corners is busted. Uh, so we're going to completely replace most of the hardware along with the screen uh, just to show you how it's done properly. As always, you need a good open workspace. You need everything you're going to need to work with it. New tabs, a new corner piece, a knife, um, and so forth. Obviously screen, the rubber to hold it in place. All right. So, all right, so with the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously pull the old screen out. We actually got kind of lucky with it being broken like this because we can just pull it all out uh, without having to cut it or use a pair of pliers or anything too dramatic. Once you get all the old screen removed, pops right out. Pops right out. Pops take out the old tabs. Take out the old corner piece. Now there's a couple of parts here that can give you trouble. A lot of the times the piece might break off inside. Now you can try to dig it out with a pair of pliers, but honestly the easiest way to do it is just going to be to push it in. That way when you put the new piece in, you can just pop it right in. And you won't have anything to worry about. You also won't mess up the screen. Um, if you mess up one of these pieces, you have to recut it. And it just can be unfortunate having to spend the extra time doing it. And there you go. Good as new. All right. So first thing is going to be sizing the screen for it. I always like to pull a little bit extra out in case we mess something up. This gives us a little bit more room to work with. Pull the piece out. You see how far you're going to need on that side. Pull it a little bit closer. This is where the knife really comes in handy. One cut. Come around to the other side. Cut straight down here. All right, that leaves us plenty of extra to work with. Trust me when I say in this, you're going to want a lot extra just to make sure, in case you have any mistakes or you screw anything up, that you'll be able to, uh, uh, you'll, you'll just have a little leeway to work with and you won't have to cut yourself a whole new piece of screen. Now that we've got our screen cut, like I said, I have it overlapping by about four or five inches on either side. Gives us a little bit extra to work with. Uh, there's actually going to be two parts, two reasons why I want you to cut it a little bit long. But we'll go over that in just a second. Next, we're going to need the rubber. This is what actually holds the screen in place. And this is going to be a very rough cut. We're basically just going to try to get enough to go all the way around. And then whatever we end up not using, we'll just cut off at the very, very end. So you just kind of guide it around. Make sure you got the right amount. Always leaving yourself a little bit extra to work with. Because uh, at the end, we can always trim it down to size as needed. Right, cut it. Now a couple of important steps here is you always want to make sure you have your, uh, your metal pieces in place. This is what's going to push back against the side. It's going to ultimately hold it into place. You also want to put your tabs in. This is what's going to let you easily pull it in and out. In and out. After you have it completely done, this is what's going to let you put the window screen actually back into place. So you hold on to these tabs as you push it in on this side. All right, now we'll lay the screen over the top. And this is one of the steps I was talking about where you want to keep it a little bit loose. If you're a professional, you can cut it exactly to size and you can put it in so that the screen's very tight. If you're not a professional, or if you are sometimes prone to mistakes, such as I am, I actually like to leave a little bit of a wrinkle right in the middle. It gives you about one inch on either side to work with. Now, in the end, it'll look a little puffy, but if you end up, while you're rolling it in, cutting it on the side, it'll give you a little bit of, to work with. You can pull back the rubber, pull the thing tight, and then go again. It'll allow you to make about two mistakes and still be able to use the same screen. So when I start, I like to put a single cut right here on the corner. Because in the end, we're going to have to cut away all this extra screen. But when we're 
actually running the rubber through the channel to hold it in place it will start to especially in the corners bunch up and it won't give you that nice clean look that you're going to be looking for in your finished product so after you cut the slit just right to where you're going to put the plastic in where you're going to put the rubber stopper in it should be good all right so this is going to be our very first press in this is where you get your roller you run it right into the channel nice and tight being careful not to hit either side of the screen because that's where you're going to get those cuts in the screen as I just did come in here and you see right in here where I've actually cut through because I hit the roller to the side this is why we give you that little bit of extra squeeze in here so when you make these kind of mistakes you can actually pull it taut again and then roll it in the rest of the way without having to completely cut a whole new screen so we'll start rolling the rest of it in, trying as hard as we can to keep to the outside, because if you have a cut on the inside, you actually have to pull it tighter. If you have a cut on the outside, like we did here, that's not a problem, because we're going to end up cutting all that extra stuff away. So just follow it around, going nice and slow, because you do not want to cut it on the inside. Even with the extra screen we gave ourselves for just such a situation, it's better to be safe than sorry, because you only get a couple of cuts before you have to completely recut the whole screen. All right, so as you can see, we're just putting constant pressure as we go across, very slowly, making sure not to cut on the inside. So we got it going pretty good. Let's get this corner in. Corners are always tricky. All right, bring it in along on the other side. And as you can see, I did it on the outside, but these are exactly the kind of mistakes that a non-pro or somebody who doesn't do this all the time is going to make. This is why you give yourself that little wrinkle in the middle. When you make this kind of mistake, you pop the plastic out, you pull the screen tighter, you put it back on, and it gives you one extra try on either side just to make sure. I go ahead and cut it. So another trick to doing this, uh, just to make it a little bit easier is you can actually pull tight on the rubber while you're uh, rolling it in it pulls the rubber a little bit tight which actually makes it smaller and then you can just put a little bit of constant pressure on it and it goes into the channel very easy this way just as you finished all the way around we're coming back over to here this is going to be the very end of what we're doing all right, get it in there nice and deep. As you can see, Fuzzy's pulling it tight as I go. That just helps it go into the channel a little bit easier. All right, we got this done nice and tight in the corner. All right, so you can see we had a little bit left over. It happens, that's why we pulled it out, just so we had a little bit extra to work with, as always. Keep it on the scissors. Mm, see, the knife would be easier. And pop that last little corner in and again back right where we started this is what helps um, look at this one right here you see how it gets all bunched up here in the corner you could cut out each corner as you go but like I said it's the first one that's really important so now that we have this cut this is where your your uh, utility knife comes in we pull up the first little flap, we cut close, and now you want to be very careful with this. We already have it put in, we still have a little bit of leeway, but not much. So you want to be extra careful. This is where you want to put on the outside, right along the plastic part here. Or, so you got the plastic part, now you're going to go along the metal part, very slowly, pulling as you go. keeping on the top of the rubber and this side of the screen right along the metal frame of the screen you see how nice and clean that cut comes out all the way across and then you're just going to finish it all the way around 
right, so we got all the excess cut off. We flipped it over so you could see the tab parts. Um, as you can see, uh, because of the couple mistakes we had going through, we had to pull it tighter. We got a nice tight finish on it. Even if we didn't, even if you had a little bit of wrinkling or whatever inside of here, it's always going to be better to have a little bit of wrinkling than to have to keep cutting screen after screen. If we would have tried to do it tight, and we would have done it with just this, with one tight go, we would have had to cut three screens to get it to work. Now again, that could be because maybe I'm not the best at it, but the fact that I gave myself that extra inch, that little bit of wrinkle inside, allowed me two mistakes and to still have it come out perfect. So, thanks again everybody. That's how you properly rescreen a window.